Hello ladies and gentlemen and thank you for joining us for another web conference from the National Brain Aneurysm Foundation. This evening um, I thought we can try to discuss some of the details that happen in the operating room as well as the angiogram suite to be able to review some of the details for aneurysm clip ligation and also aneurysm coiling. Obviously, there are, there's a lot happening there, and the details can vary based on the individual patient, but there are certain general themes that remain very much stable for management of the aneurysms. So I thought to be able to familiarize with you, to familiarize you with what happens in the care of your aneurysm, we can review some of the technical terms. Let's go ahead and, um, as always, first discuss our disclosures and acknowledgments. So what is a cerebral aneurysm? I think most of you guys know that very well, but I think it's worth talking about it one more time. An aneurysm is a blister off of a normal brain, blood, uh, brain vessel of the brain, usually the artery. As you can see here, there is an artery of the brain, usually located at the base of the brain, and there is a weakening in the wall that leads to formation of a cerebral aneurysm. It's important to know that most aneurysms are degenerative in nature. In other words, they occur as the aging process continues. However, there is congenital forms of aneurysms in pediatric population, which are obviously very rare. So the aneurysms most often occur in 50s and 60s and obviously 70s, although occasionally in 40s as well. There is risk of smoking and high blood pressure which facilitate formation and enlargement of cerebral aneurysms. And because the aneurysm is this blister off of the normal blood vessel, it can rupture and lead to subarachnoid hemorrhage, which has unfortunately very devastating consequences in some of the patients. So here is a normal blood vessel coming off of the base of the brain, as you can see here. And there is a small aneurysm, in this case a middle cerebral artery aneurysm that's um, forming right here and we find a way to sort of get to it and put a clip across this tiny little brister. So the biggest question is how to treat cerebral aneurysms and what cerebral aneurysms need to be actually treated. There is new data to support that small aneurysms less than seven millimeter if they are unruptured the risk of hemorrhage may actually be very small compared to treating the aneurysm. So for those patients who have an aneurysm found incidentally, most often because of management of a headache, if your aneurysm is less than seven millimeters, which is unrelated to your headache, some folks and some surgeons will recommend observation and follow-up imaging. However, if you have a ruptured aneurysm, it must be treated. And also if you have an aneurysm which is larger than, larger than seven millimeters, it has to be treated as well um, because the risk of hemorrhage can be significant, especially if you're a young patient. Those individuals who have aneurysms larger than 7 millimeters and they're older than 75 years old have to be evaluated based on case-by-case -case basis for their need for treatment. So let's say you have an aneurysm that has to be treated. How do we treat an aneurysm? Well, there is two main ways to do it if you, you know, plan not to undergo observation and follow-up imaging. One is placement of a clip surgically across the neck of the aneurysm, and one is placement of platinum coils using an angiogram, a catheter through your vessels to sort of bunch up the coils within the aneurysm so the blood cannot get into the aneurysm. Again, aneurysm is an abnormal outpouching of a blood vessel wall. It doesn't have any function. It has a risk of rupturing and causing subarachnoid hemorrhage. So we try to go between the layers of the brain, find the aneurysm, and place a clip across the aneurysm. So let's say you are supposed to have your aneurysm treated, and your surgeon is going to talk to you in detail. Are you candidate for coiling or clipping? What are the differences between the two? Coiling often is less risky up front, but the risk, of, the risk of aneurysmal recurrence is higher. How, and this is because a special issue, especially in young